Hello everyone, welcome back to Yogi Temple, and it's a bright sunny day here in the village, so uh, let's get straight into it. So firstly, we have a few developments to, to uh, show off. Um, that is, firstly, I believe we have a couple of new residents, so let's just head over to the Q Dojo where they're probably hanging out. Uh, oh, yep, that's the pipes in the pharmaturgy going off. Uh, okay, so, over here we have Fujishira and Mike. Can I just get you guys to, like, come and stand out here a bit so can, people can see you a bit better? Because I know the, like, Yokai Village blog is going to want to see you. Over there, please. Thank you. And over here. There we go. So, first up, we have Kaze Usagi, who is one of the uh, very few, well, well, the only two, like, priests over here at the actual main compound. And she is uh, user Flying's Rest, uh, or the Flying Bun, formerly the Flying Guy, but we're not using that anymore. Um, and they are uh, a Miko design, but uh, it's very nicely done. Works quite well, and honestly, there are very few Miko designs in my backlog, so thank you very much, Flying, for that one. Um, and pairing up, because we always put our priests in pairs, we have Fujishiro Amaya, which is Tumblr user made of hope. And uh, yeah, they've got a nice, fairly simplistic sort of kimono design there, looking good. Uh, where's Usagi just gone? <laughs> Usagi? Oh, gone right back there. Okay, that's fine. So yeah, I set up... Obviously the food isn't as big of an issue anymore, so I set up uh, Mizuki to start bringing food over to these town halls. So uh, the priests are able to survive over here, quite nice. And yeah, as people who have not played or necessarily played around with Ancient Warfare or watched the series for very long will know, uh, or probably not know, um, you put your priests in pairs you're, uh, because um, if one dies, and since they tend to wander, that's a necessity, um, you want to make sure that what they can still be resurrected, or else they can't resurrect anybody anymore. So you put them in pairs, so if one dies, the other can resurrect him. Okay, so that's that little bit of house cleaning. And, oh, I've still got Kaze. There we go. Yeah. Usagi chan and Amaya san. So there we go. Uh, next up, in our side of our bright red pagoda here, um, you'll notice this block is here, which means we can't possibly be getting mana out of here anymore. So how is all of this recharging? How do I have a fully charged mana mirror? Well, as I mentioned before, there's a problem with the cake reactor system, which is that you either need to have a way to make it start pretty much from dry, meaning fill the whole water tray and like replace the, the um, air fire, or you need to make sure that there's always somewhere for the mana to go. So. Over here, we've got uh, just a couple of, uh, of an Elven Manspread and a Gaia Manspread. I'm probably going to upgrade this one. Um, in fact, I might even like double these up all the way up because this system produces a lot of mana. And I don't know if it's handling it fast enough, but down here, we have a very little compact system. So on this side, we can see quite easily we've got two sticky pistons. One controls whether this mana spreader can exit into this mana void, so that just dumps all of the mana that comes out into that mana void, voids it completely because it's, it's regenerating. We don't need to worry about it too much. And the other one, if this system's in the other state, uh, pulls down the block that is preventing those two spreaders from getting to the external mana pool, which is what the whole system is relying on and watching. So then, we have this very small, kind of very compact, I'm loving this kind of system, take a look at that if you want, uh, which is using a remote comparator linked to that mana pool, and it's putting the power into this block so that it can go to both ways, uh, and it will only go one way, thankfully. And then one of these is looking for our minimum power of 5, that is our low measurement, and another is looking for our minimum power of 10, that is our high measurement. So 10 should be the maximum signal we get, 5 should be the minimum, that's kind of our range. Um, because if we just had it as a single one, then these pistons would be just sort of constantly going up and down, which uh, is not good. It's also very noisy, so it's not very nice. So. When the power is finally high, when everything's recharged, a one-way signal comes through this repeater into this RS latch, putting in this signal here and locking it via the uh, memory here, which means that all of the mana after that gets voided completely. No worries. When the power in that mana pool finally drains, because of course now nothing's charging it again, uh, this signal drops. So that's when it drops below 5, then this NOT gate can finally trigger. Uh, 
changing the state in our RLS latch again, so turning this off, so that retracts, this one extends, because the uh, torch underneath it has gone on, and the whole system starts to replenish, and it just goes round and round in a cycle, I will never have to worry about mana pretty much ever again, as long as it all, as long as anything I use connects in some fashion to this first mana pool. Perfect. So that is Cake Reactor Control, at the uh, Pagoda here in Yokai. So, next up, our ingredients list for Icor, which we're going to need to try and get some answers, um, is uh, Eyes of Ender, fairly easy to get, uh, Diamonds, very easy to get, um, Never Shards, which I have gone through the Never and gotten a bunch of. Uh, not too many. You would not believe how many I had, how many, like, zombie pigmen I had to fight to get just nine of them. But we have nine of them. We have no Ender Shards, however, is the next ingredient. Um, and of course, from last episode, uh, we also got a bunch of Wither Stars. I now have a block and a bit more change of them now, so yay for that. But the next thing that we need to get is the. Oh, let me see if I can find them. Uh, there we go. Is the Ender Shards. The, re the actual, like, aspects here are fairly easy. Just Spiritus, Lux, Humanus, very easy to get. But the Ender Shards... The Ender Shards are dropped by Endermen living in the End. Now, that wouldn't be such a problem, because, of course, we fought the End. I was there! I was the resident priest. I was uh, reviving people, although that was made very difficult by the fact that we were having so much tremendous lag then. Now, that would then lead us to believe, therefore, that the end is safe right now, wouldn't it? Except that it's not, and we know it's not, because we can fly, like, right over here, not even very far, honestly, and we can see what used to be Dave's house, like, just sort of divided straight on the line of our, uh, pacification ritual right over here and let's just say the world had its shift and now much of the world yokai temple is the exception uh, much of the world has been remade in a, in a mirror of its former self but different in many ways uh, hence the biome changes over there which means quite probably that the end has also been remade. The Never certainly has. I've been through there. There is almost no remains of the Arcturus Highway at all. Uh, so, pity for Archie there. So, I have tooled up because I'm pretty sure there's going to be a Dragoness through there. And she's not going to like me at all because she doesn't really like anybody at all. And to that end, I have a couple new items. Uh, my armor hasn't really changed at all, uh, so yeah, that's just still the same protection all the way through. Um, but I have a couple new weapons, so if we first look at... Let's go with the, the infused bow. So I've been kind of waiting to make this one for ages. This is from Magical Crops. You uh, need a whole bunch of the extreme essence, which I'm now auto-crafting in my spirit box, so yay for that, to make it. And it is Azerite Unbreakable. It has 100 durability, but you never actually touch into that. It, is it does not break at all. It also has built-in infinity, which is pretty handy. And I have enchanted it, so it now has power 5 and quick draw 2. Quick draw 2 goes up, it quick draw goes up to 3, I believe. It basically in like decreases the amount of time it takes to draw it to full. Uh, hence the name quick draw. And power 5, everyone should know, just makes a deal more damage. This bow can now one-shot zombies. Now, if you happen to know anything about zombies uh, built-in innate damage reduction, that should tell you a fair bit about how much damage this thing does, and it can do it very quickly, so... I figure uh, we'll keep Cure Sets, uh, which is, by the way, Fox Shards from Digimon, of course, um, as our sort of crowd control, uh, but we'll be using the Essence Infused Bow as our main... We have a target, let's take that one down. And then, replacing my Spectre Sword, we have this Cursed Spirit's Blade. So this is Tinker's Construct, you can already see one part of its bonus there, it uh, gives me a bit of speed. Um, so if I take a look in the book at this, because it will explain it a lot better than I probably can. So, upon damaging anything with this sword, the attacker will take one heart of damage. Not great, but we can deal. Blocking with the sword will always deal only 1.5 hearts, regardless of the original damage. 
Furthermore, simply holding this sword gives the holder a steadfast aura, making them move faster than normal. So we can run around speedily like that. And of course, I forgot to turn that off. I'll get that. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, you have also discovered that the sword can reap the souls of mobs instead of normal drops. This ability is activated via shift right click. The souls are rich in essential, but you suspect they might have other uses. So if I hold this, then shift right click, activated essential harvesting. If there was a mob around here, and I can see that there is in fact a zombie just over here. Uh, can I find him? Is the next question. Um, oh, nope, but there's a creeper. A creeper should do. Hello, creeps. Gotcha. Okay, so yeah, I took a bit of damage there. Um, but we got a bunch of these uh, Alienis, Precantatio, and Bestia, because of course this has looting free on it, so I get a bunch of stuff. So let me just turn that off again. Uh, but yeah, it between the Sharpness 4 and the Looting 3 on that, it actually does 15 attack damage. And the tooltip there is a little borked for speed, but uh, it does actually make me a bit a bit speedier. Even over my existing uh, Boots of the Traveler, so I'm pretty mightily speedy. So now, I have to go and get um, a bunch of different, like, Eyes of Ender, which is fairly easy because we have a bunch of uh, Blaze Essence and we have a bunch of Ender Essence and all sorts. And I need to go and find a end portal. So, um, I will be back with you in a moment as I set out to, like, probably time-lapse my journey over to wherever the uh, actual portal is, because I do not know. I don't know where it's moved to, if, it, if indeed it has moved at all. Um, and either way, it's a long way, so catch you in a moment. Okay, everyone, it looks like we've actually found a, a stronghold fairly close to, well, yes, yes we have, fairly close to Yokai. So, it shouldn't be too hard to locate exactly where it is, it's probably beneath us at the moment. Phew. Okay, so... Somewhere around here is an inactive end portal. Now, for those of you who aren't particularly up on the lore, um, the end sort of doesn't make sense. Uh, it's sort of... It, it's, it's a little hard to describe, but the end begins where all things have gone where all things are no more. It is entropy, it is death, it is generally not a nice place. Um, and the ruler of such a not nice place is, of course, whoop, that would be silverfish, um, is, of course, uh, whoop, the most evil and corrupt Ryujin one could hope to find. Uh, hello, uh, I can see on my map there is something in there. Something this way, perhaps? Possibly. Let's dig this way, see what we find. Uh, 
something up here. Well, there's almost something up here. Not very helpful. I'll be why that's so dark. Hmm, where can we dig around to next, I wonder? Well, it started going down right here, so logically that must mean somewhere around here. Level 25 so far. Bunch of different ores. Uh, oh, I see it, I see it. Okay, it's right over there, okay. So we need to head this way. Ah, I changed up some of the enchantments on my like primary digging tool, so my diamond shovel now has consuming, which means I don't get anything back that I mine with it. Um, which is helpful and detrimental in its own ways. Means I don't get my inventory full of junk, but, you know, also means I don't get any dirt. Uh, my, sh my pickaxe, on the other hand, as you are probably guessing, I'll give you guys some light, um, probably guessing has uh, silk touch on it now as well, which is helpful when I'm dealing with things uh, with living rock, for example, because living rock only comes from smooth stone, it does not come from anything else. Okay, right hand turn. And we're back in here. Okay, nothing up there. So yes, long, 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 long ago, uh, humans tried to entice the ends. Humans tried to investigate the end, and that's where these strongholds come from. And Ningen being as proud and yeah, kind of dumb as they are, um, they sort of made a hash of it, and we ended up with a continuous set of portals, about three generally, um, to a place ruled only by death and decay. So let's just do the obviously smart thing and try and reopen this, because, you know, that couldn't possibly go wrong. There we go. And of course, these have just sort of been left to ruin and decay now, so they're kind of just full of all manner of junk and uh, mushrooms everywhere and all sorts. And oh good, there's a chest here, which I can dump some of these excess goods in. Uh, right before we head out. Let's just stick some stone here to keep things a little bit at bay. Uh, ugh, bees. Yeah, full of bees now. Great. Uh, I'm sure this place was very nice back in yon day, but uh, it is not that day. Not anymore. So, there is no more delay. We must end up in here. Oh boy. Gods protect us. Oh. The port evidently Evidently the dragon is gone. Interesting. It must not have been affected by the world shift. No, everything here is still intact. Oh. Okay, so I've just gained a new portal to oblivion. Look, there's still experience here. Huh. Experience and webs. different. Somewhere around here is probably that house that we uh, ended up around. Where is it? Let's see if we can find it. Does it show up on the map? Uh, if it does, then it's been demolished. Or maybe somebody else came through here. I don't know, but that's fine by me. My job here is only to get Enderman, so... So, we need to go through a bunch of these guys. Whoa. Phew. I think I can handle these guys, thankfully. We have a lot, a lot of spare ender pearls by the time I'm done, though. I see you there. 
Attack the feet, that's the key. Attack the feet. Right. I'm going to have a lot to do here, so... I hope you've enjoyed this near miss of an episode, and... Wow, Vampire Gaiden has a lot of health there. Jeez. And I will uh, catch you next time. Ooh. Poodles. Okay, everyone, so that was a little bit of a bust. I know you were all expecting me to go fight a dragon. So I am on one of my test worlds at the moment. Well, the one of the, one of the few ones that actually has, like, actual world gen as it happens. So we're going to go fight a dragon. I have replicated pretty much all of my gear, I believe, in, in effect, if not in actuality. So here goes nothing. Let's see where we end up now. No, oh, my luck, this is where the client crashes. Okay, well, this is a lovely place to be. Uh, fortunately, I can fly. Which is good because the dragon is right behind me. And lagging a little bit. Okay. No sign of Endymans. Although I know that they'll be around. Come on. Come on, Glidia. Gotcha. Wow, this does a lot of damage to her. In fact, this arrow, these arrows fly so fast, I'm actually having a little bit of trouble figuring out where to point them. Come on. Come on! Come on, take me! What we are learning here is that I am a terrible shot. Jeez. Come on. Just get her lower. Oh, I think she might be coming in for a dive soon. And I'm right. Come on. Ho ho! And down. Phew. Okay, so that's basically what it would have looked like if I had fought a dragon today. Hope you all enjoy, and uh, I will catch you all on Yokai Temple next time.